First of all, um, I've never been in this room. So when I walked in, I thought the, the scene outside is so distracting on a sunny day. Uh, it's hard to keep an eye on the presentation here, but I hope I can do a good job here. Um, first of all, thanks for giving me a chance to speak here. I'm not an optical guy. Uh, I'm more of a system architect uh, working at, at Intel since 92, uh, right out of school. Um, I worked on microprocessors previously and uh, later on network processors and wireless system design. And in the last six or seven years, I've been focusing on um, um, computer vision, uh, sensor fusion uh, spaces. Uh, that in the last uh, couple of years, I've been doing a lot of work on drones. And the last few months, I've been, started, I've been starting to focus more on how do we bring vision and uh, deep learning capabilities integrated inside the uh, camera modules. Uh, that that's has been my focus uh, in the last few months. Uh, today, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you about uh, overall uh, organizationally perceptual computing within Intel, what we do. Here, our objective here really is to enhance or develop devices, develop machines that will allow us to sense and interact in everyday environments. So the idea is that uh, you have bring this ability to sense, understand what the camera sees, uh, and give the ability to interact with, uh, interact with the machines or the machines interacting with other machines, and including learning in that process. So we have three major uh, components uh, as part of that uh, today. Uh, the, the first one is uh, Intel RailSense cameras. Uh, these, are, uh, these are cameras that can see, uh, uh, that, that will give you depth of each pixel. Um, there are multiple technologies that are used inside these cameras. Uh, we have cameras ranging from structured light to passive stereo to active stereo, as well as uh, upcoming solutions with the time of flight uh, sensors as well. And uh, the second uh, important piece uh, here is the vision processing unit. Uh, the Movidius is a company we recently acquired. Uh, uh, I will talk briefly about it. Uh, what this uh, chip allows us to do is uh, within approximately 1.2 watts or so, uh, it allows you to bring vision processing um, and uh, deep neural network capabilities uh, right next to the camera sensor uh, or vision sensor in this uh, example. And finally, uh, the third piece uh, that we, uh, we have been working on and uh, developing is uh, uh, motion sensors. Uh, what we are finding, uh, finding is that in robotics, as well as drones, and many use cases uh, where the cameras are in motion, uh, very accurate uh, six degrees of freedom positioning of the camera sensor is very important for the rest of the system to figure out where the system is with respect to the surroundings of the system. So, uh, one of the big solutions for that is uh, giving a very low cost, uh, low power um, sen uh, sensor fusion that will give you six degrees of freedom uh, on a real time basis. Uh, this, uh, this is an example of uh, what we can do with our camera. Um, with a, uh, we, we took an office area. Uh, we can do a live uh, uh, 3D reconstruction of what the camera is seeing um, in real time. Uh, basically, we can combine uh, color, depth, and the location, indoor location, using the six degrees of freedom uh, sensor fusion. Uh, these are the set of cameras uh, that are currently um, uh, that we have. Uh, from top to bottom, the the, the top two SR300 and LR200 are uh, the previous generation cameras. Uh, the SR300 is a uh, stru uh, structured light. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a coded light uh, sensor. LR200 is a active stereo camera, uh, and ZR300, uh, this piece here includes the, a fisheye camera that allows and calibrated uh, along with the rest of the color and the depth camera together. Uh, all of these will allow you to do uh, a localization and mapping technique, a SLAM, if I may. Um, finally, these are, uh, these are the new generation cameras we are currently sampling. Um, this, this particular camera uh, is a much higher resolution, much better than the, I will give a quick summary of this later on, compared to this uh, current generation camera here. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, some of these cameras, uh, weight, weight is very important to us because especially in, uh, in drone platforms, uh, this camera, um, for example, weighs about eight grams, uh, including all the optics. 
Uh, in all these cameras, we, uh, we put a uh, special ASIC. Uh, that ASIC is basically taking the, the camera outputs and uh, doing the rectification and stereo correlation. Those are the two single uh, steps that consume most amount of compute. And we offloaded that compute into this SOC or special ASIC that runs inside the camera, inside the camera module itself. Along with these cameras, in, uh, we also supply uh, three set of libraries. Uh, one is a SLAM library. SLAM allows you to give you allows you to uh, give an, uh, give access to uh, position information, orientation information, and live reconstruction, mesh formation, and so on. Person library is more about tracking a person, uh, recognizing a person, detecting a face, and so on. And object library is about basically learning. Uh, detecting the objects, learning about the objects, and scanning the objects, and so on. Um, this is a this is an image of uh, uh, one of the latest uh, cameras that we are sampling. This is called R400 series. Uh, compared to the um, previous generation, uh, this is approximately 20 times uh, more powerful in terms of capabilities. Uh, just in terms of resolution, it's about 5.3 times more. Uh, it shifts from slightly lower than VGA, sub-VGA, to about um, 720p, 30 frames per second in the current generation. Uh, what this means is that uh, uh, in your field, uh, just one comment on the field of view of these cameras. These cameras uh, we are designing such that uh, the lenses can support a 72 degree uh, diagonal field of view, as well as a a 100 degree diagonal field of view that will give you wide angle, especially required for uh, drones and robots use cases. Uh, the, the couple of other pieces on this is that uh, they come with the USB and uh, MIPI interfaces. Uh, MIPI is a new interface that we didn't have previously. And in terms of algorithmic improvements, uh, these, uh, this ASIC that is uh, used in this particular generation uh, it can um, take advantage of the color. Uh, so previous uh, generation cameras were IR only cameras. So these are RGB IR uh, cameras. So this will give us a much better performance in terms of uh, fewer holes and uh, longer range overall. And since these are, uh, these can be active or passive, um, basically by just turning off the uh, emitter, uh, uh, what happens is uh, you get a really good performance uh, outdoors as well. Um, just here I have an example of uh, a Myriad processor uh, uh, that belongs to um, our team uh, we, uh, with the recent acquisition of Movidius. Uh, one of the key uh, capabilities this chip brings is um, um, there, are, there are about 12 um, uh, VLIW processing engines uh, we call shave, in, shave cores. And these shave cores can be programmed uh, with the multiple vision algorithms uh, CNN algorithms, and we, we currently implement a, um, a uh, deep learning uh, network, uh, uh, called one of the inception versions uh, inside these shear processors. And on the top of the chip, we have hardware accelerators that will allow you to do fixed function color processing. Um, and then there are several other filters and IOs and so on managed by two uh, scalar CPUs on this processor. Uh, in the example here, I'm showing uh, uh, one of our customers, uh, DJI, uh, using this uh, Movidius uh, chip with a passive stereo depth camera, uh, creating an uh, obstacle map in real time. So what this allows us to do is once you have an obstacle map, uh, the, the, the drone can pause because it knows that there is an obstacle in front of it, and um, it, al it allows the drone to have a capability of collision avoidance. Uh, I talked about this, I'll skip this. Uh, these are some of the key areas that we are currently focusing on. Uh, drones is one category, and robotics, and augmented reality, uh, mixed reality spaces, as well as retail spaces. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, here is an example of a product that uh, I worked on and uh, we successfully launched uh, last year. Uh, what we what we can do with this is that uh, we combined uh, um, a real sense camera 
and a uh, ultrasound uh, sonar uh, sensor together uh, to create a, a mesh of what the camera sees in the field of view. And what that does is with a processor, with the help of an atom processor inside, uh, we create a uh, real-time mesh as well as a path planning algorithms running in real time. So this, this will allow the drone to have the capability of uh, um, not just uh, bl stopping when it sees a tree or a, or a pole in front of it, but kind of create a new path and go around the obstacle because uh, this information is available in the map. Um, as you can see uh, in this example, we are showing uh, the drone really following uh, the skateboarder. And while it is following, it uh, bypasses. It doesn't, it makes sure it doesn't hit the trees and stuff. This is one of the use cases. And this drone is currently selling. Um, we launched it uh, last June. And one of the, one of the things uh, we are doing right now is that uh, this drone heavily depends on uh, GPS, uh, external GPS for, a, for, a location, for locating itself. And what happens is uh, there are multiple customers wanting such or similar capability indoors in large indoor environment where GPS is not available. So this is where our positioning solution using IMU and camera, what we call visual inertial odometry based location, uh, that's the technology that we are working on to put in these drones next. Um, here I have an example of uh, uh, is, uh, a robot uh, that uses uh, uh, real sense technology uh, to interact uh, and follow uh, directions. Oh, sorry. Did I? I'm supposed to have a video. You think we can play that video? There should be a video. Pardon me? Uh, the, the bottom right. Yeah. There you go. Um, we don't have the audio here, but uh, the idea here is that uh, the chairman of ASUS was is super interested in, uh, you know, Jingo. having this. Okay. It is a hi. My name is Zingo. It is a pleasure to meet you. Obviously, Sembo can do a lot more than just introducing himself. By using simple voice commands, he's able to control home appliances, turn on the TV, cast media to the TV. take photos, play music while dancing to it. Sembo is essentially an Android tablet on wheels. It also features several sensors for object avoidance plus drop avoidance, a depth camera for object recognition, and a port for future add-ons. Our ambition you know, is to enable robotic computing for every household at only $5.99, right? He's a big fan of um, robots. Um, <laughs> so um, here is an example of uh, indoor navigation. Uh, what we are uh, trying to do here is uh, combine the RealSense camera with a fisheye uh, camera. The reason we use fisheye is uh, typically what happens is um, when you are closer to the wall, uh, you cannot see features. Uh, we are really, what we are really doing is we are doing a Kalman filter on combination of IMU-based distance estimate with uh, camera-based distance, distance estimate. So when the camera, camera has to continuously see features in the field of view, when you're closer to a plain wall where you can't see features, the camera stops to work. That's the reason why we use a uh, wide angle up to like 160 degrees or so field of view that allows you to see the edges uh, along the uh, periphery of the camera uh, that will allow us to continue to measure uh, uh, track features and estimate distances. Uh, here is an example of uh, uh, this tracker uh, output on a screen while a person is holding the camera and walking around. Um, this is showing a SLAM technology. What we're really sh doing here is not just uh, simply uh, doing an indoor position estimate as you can see on the track. Um, and uh, the, the prism uh, that you see is actually showing the pose estimate of the camera, the, the six degrees with which the camera is pointed towards. 
and then it is also mapping a 2D map of occupancy of the space. So what it is doing is simultaneously, as it is looking at tables and chairs, uh, it scans them. As it scans them, we have algorithms that can learn those um, structures and identify those structures and remember those structures and the, remember the location of the structures. Uh, these, are, these are techniques that are very useful for uh, robots for navigation, um, whether it is commercial or consumer use cases, uh, as well as uh, for drones uh, when we are using them for uh, commercial inspections. Uh, next example is uh, we have designed a, a reference uh, platform for uh, all-in-one uh, VR platform. We call this actually uh, a mixed reality. Uh, the reason uh, the mixed reality is that uh, today you see a lot of VR devices where uh, you cannot see what is in front of you, but you can have this virtual experience. And then we have uh, HoloLens type uh, devices where you can see through and have an overlay of uh, what you're seeing or information on, uh, overlay information on top of what you're seeing. Uh, what this mixed reality um, capability with respect to RealSense allows us to do is uh, um, the real sense camera can scan your hands while you are in a while you are exper experiencing a virtual reality use case, and then insert those hands into the virtual reality scene. Uh, so these type of use cases will allow you to uh, interact with things around you um, while you are uh, enjoying a virtual reality experience. Um, some of the things uh, you can do. With the, with the integration of these sensors is uh, you can do a 3D scanning, you can actually scan a person standing in front of you and insert them into the, into the virtual reality uh, game or whatever the use case may be. Um, I have a couple of experimental uh, uh, devices uh, that I want to show you before I uh, complete my presentation here. Uh, one is uh, we are working on a experimental long range uh, 3D camera. Uh, the, basically what we are trying to do is how do we uh, the sensors that we previously have shown you, they typically work in the range of uh, three to four meters indoors. Out, outdoors, we use them for larger distances. Uh, but uh, for example, like a drone use case, I can, I can use this up to 20 meters, and that allows the drone to fly up to 15 meters per second. Uh, however, um, drone does not require very accurate positioning. So one of, whereas, uh, versus if you are doing some other use cases, you might require more accurate positioning or more accurate Z depth. So for that reason, we are, we are spending much of time on uh, you know, uh, do, designing long range cameras. In this example here, we are able to achieve uh, with a passive uh, camera up to two meters, within two meters of accuracy, Z accuracy at a 50 meter range. Um, here is an example of, uh, we put this camera on a dashboard and drove on the streets. And as you can see, um, it performs uh, reasonably well um, in terms of estimating the distances. The black regions on the depth map you see on the right side are where uh, the camera is not able to uh, correlate and calculate the distances. But most of the region is uh, well uh, calculated, as you can see. Uh, and the color heat map is actually representing the distances on the right side, uh, the, the, the blue being the closest and the red being the farthest from the camera. And uh, finally, um, I want to close this uh, uh, presentation with, uh, uh, with the point that uh, we are experimenting combining uh, RealSense camera and Movidius vision processes into a very small form factor um, edge devices. Uh, this can be used in uh, many, many use cases, uh, starting from uh, drones and robots and AR, VR, and also uh, for uh, smart camera type of use cases in terms of like access control, face recognition, so on and so forth. Thank you very much.